welcome to my channel. I am Mrs. Peach Harleton. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Today I wanted to talk to you about digital interactive notebooks. For those of you that have already gone back to school, you're probably feeling the pressure much like I am. And although I'd love to create another digital interactive notebook, I really just do not have the time. Are you there with me? Are you feeling my pain? It's crunch time and I didn't create enough resources. So my plan is to use free digital interactive notebooks and I'm going to edit them to customize them and make them my own. Now don't forget, you've got to give these people credit that have created them, but wow, they're allowing you to use it for free. So let's dive in and let me show you how you can take a free resource, edit it, and customize it to make it fit your needs. Let's dive in. So let's head over to slidesmania.com. Paula has created this amazing site for educators, for business people, for fun, all these different slides. She's got a passion for slides. I love this site. It has so many things. I would suggest that you look through and for your digital interactive notebook, get one that you like the best and then just make minor adjustments. I'm going to go search here in the education notebook style. This one's very nice, very business-like, professional. I like the layout of this one. I'm not a big fan of the colors. You can change the colors. Some of them are a little more work than others. So I want to get one that I like almost everything about it and just have to make minor adjustments. So when I get to this one here, I notice it's all the colors that I would just love. So I'm going to click on it. It's a free digital notebook. There's eight sections. And if you read through here, it tells you the suggestions from the creator and what they suggest on editing. So they're recommending you do not add slides when using this template, but instead duplicate the existing slides. Then you don't have to re-link any pages. You can add slides, but then you'd have to do a little more work. And we want to make this quick and easy. They even tell you how to change quickly the titles using your find feature. So I think I'm going to use this one. You can download it as a PowerPoint or in Google Slides. I'm using Google Slides. You want to use the template. It will make a copy and put it into your drive. There it is, all laid out. It has more directions and suggestions throughout, and you just edit it right here and take that right out. If you triple click the title there, you can change that as well. These slides are already linked to where they need to be link to. So you don't have to make any adjustments there. The reason you want to link them in this view edit mode here is so that the links will work when you're looking at it like this. So if you want your links to work when you're in presentation mode or present mode, these have to be created in master view. So you would create these links in master view. Some people have asked me, why do I link twice? Why do I do it in master view and on editing view right here? And that's the reason. Editing view, the ones created in master will not work. That's why you have to create them again here. So let's go over to master view, view, master. And here we have our digital interactive notebook. And because I chose one that I really like and I like all the colors, there's just very minor little edits that I would make to this one. And that's the goal. You want to make very few edits. You want something quick and easy, right? Personally, I would like to change the font. So I'm going to go to this first master slide. This first one controls the fonts on all the other slides at every level. So if you change it here, then it's going to change here and all the other ones that have that same font. So this one will change. This one will change. And because I use an add-on 
called extensus font. I'm going to change it. I have options. I have more options. So let's go ahead. I'm going to triple click here. Go to my add-ons, extensus font, and I'm going to find a fun font that I like. I always go for this one. I don't know why, but I like that one. Click on that one and it changed the title. Notice it changed here also. And this one changed also. So the main title font will change. If you decide that's not what you want, triple click it and you can change it again. And there we have it, it's changed. So that's one minor edit that I would make. Now remember I told you that these are already linked, your tabs are already linked. I showed you for your present view. So you want to be aware that when you are creating things that you don't create too much. Now, if you do want to change this background, you can. However, you've got to make some adjustments. Because I read through the directions of the creator and she's used this as digital paper, this is just an image overlay. And I can tell because when I click on it, it actually highlights it. So I can actually replace the image and I can search the web. Sometimes I like to add GIFs, but again, you want to be aware that the more animations, the more things you add, the more it's going to slow down on the student's end. So I'm going to replace this purple one with this. I do see that it's covered up my tab, so I would just drag it in and reveal my tabs. When you go over to view, you will see that it's replaced that slide with your animated GIF and all your tabs are still working. If your tabs are not working, you can just recreate them and add them to your slide. So if you added your own slide instead of duplicating the slide as suggested by the creator. So if I right click new slide, these are no longer linked because I didn't duplicate the slide. I lost all my links. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to copy those links. So if I go back to one that has the links for all these tabs, I left click, hold my mouse down, and I'm going to highlight just the tip of these tabs. I'm going to control C. I'm going to copy it here. When I click on the slide that I just created, control V will paste those tabs back down. And these are all linked to the correct spot. So that's a quick and easy way that you can create your own slide. If you want one that has plain paper, so see how this one has line paper in it? I'm going to go to this little drop down arrow. This is everything that's been created in their master slides. And as I look through, I don't see any with plain paper. So one that I can create a Venn diagram or what a card sort, those type of things. If I go back to view, and master, I can create one. And depending on what color section you want it in, that's where you would go to add it. So control D will duplicate that slide so I don't lose any of the linked tabs. So as I try to change the background, I'm clicking on it and I'm finding that it's not giving me the option to change the background. When I get this plus sign with the arrows and I drag things off, I can see that it's layered. There's many, many layers on here and the lines are actually buried. So those were the lines. So if I delete that page out and then slide all my pages back over, I can remove the lines. 
So now my page has a blank page in the background. And the way I figured that out is because I just kind of clicked here and I kept looking to highlight the background when it looked like I highlighted the background. I never got an option to change the background. So that's when I realized it was layers. I do not suggest you go this deep into it. A quick and easy fix that you could do is to duplicate the slide. And you can leave all of the lines there in the back. Just add a shape. And you can paste your shape right here. And you can do the white background. The rest will have the lines and that's okay. Change it to white. Go to your fill bucket. Choose white. And your border you want to also be white. Down here I notice it's a little long. I would just drag it up. And then you can bring your text boxes back over if you would like. They're in the back of that white one. So arrange, order, and bring to the front. But if you wanted to create a Venn diagram, you want your students to use a Venn diagram over and over, you can remove these and just add your Venn diagram here. So then when your students went to the drop down arrow, they would have the option to open up your Venn diagram. You can change the color. Control D will duplicate it. I'm going to change the color of the second one that's highlighted. The one that's on top of the blue, I want it to be a little more transparent so I can see the blue. Go to my fill bucket, go to custom, drag down the transparency. And now you have your Venn diagram set up because this is a new slide that we added to the master view. It's not here. I'm going to place it here in my math section. So go to this drop down arrow. And if I scroll through all the master slides, I can see that I've added the Venn diagram. Let me check and make sure my tabs because I did not duplicate a slide. I've lost all my tabs. I didn't duplicate it here on the view, but that's okay because I've already showed you. You just go to one that's already linked left click and highlight just the tabs. Control C will copy it. Control V will paste and everything is linked back up. How are you going to use this digital interactive notebook? I suggest you find one that you like the most. Like honestly, I really, really like this one. And I don't know that I would change much more than the font. Keep it super simple. Let's call it KISS. Let's keep it super simple and make our lives easier. So how are you going to use this digital interactive notebook? I'm sure it's going to save you a ton of time using one that's already created. Still, you'll be able to give it that personal touch that you and your students love. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember, step out and be uniquely wonderful you.